So good afternoon, everyone. So today we are going to start chapter four. And this is the title, Consolidated Financial Statements After the Acquisition. So if you remember our chapter three, this is chapter three. Chapter three also consolidated financial statement, but is something like at the date of acquisition. So two different dates, consolidated financial statements after acquisition and the consolidated balance sheet of financial statement at the date of acquisition. For example, if you look at the date, it is something like 1st January 2027. So this is the date, this is the date, the parent company acquired subsidiary company. And how to prepare the balance sheet, I mean consolidated balance sheet, we already learned in chapter three. <laughs> Now chapter four is about, you can see that the date is December 31st, 2027. December 31st, so look at the date. Now different date, right? Also consolidated financial statement, but it is just one year later, one year later. So chapter three, we learned consolidated financial statement at the date of acquisition, parents company, acquired subsidiary company, and how to prepare the consolidated financial statement after the acquisition one year later. This is chapter four and we are here. We are chapter four. So chapter three already done. So these are the topics we are going to cover for chapter four investment in a stock. We already learned this from chapter one, two, three, how to record investment in subsidiary. We already know that. And we also know how to eliminate investment account, how to eliminate the book bill of subsidiary. We learned this from chapter three. Now, when we prepare consolidated financial statements, we have two methods. We have two methods. One is called the cost method, and another is called the equity method. So both methods are important, but in the exam, maybe I will give you one method, and uh, different method have different accounting system. So today's class, I'm going to explain in detail what is the difference between the cost method and the equity method. Because if you don't know, if you don't know what is the difference between these two methods, then it will be very difficult for you to solve the question. Okay, so please make sure that, please make sure that you understand cost method and equity method very well. Although you learn, Although you learn cost method and equity method in your intermediate accounting, but I decided to explain them again because these are very important for advanced accounting. So let's see the first topic here, investment in stock. So when we are preparing investment in stock related accounts, okay, here investment in subsidiary stock means you are if you are the parent company you are investment in a subsidiary company and this kind of investments this kind of investment you can record consolidated or you can record separately so usually in the intermediate accounting or principles accounting you we already learn how to prepare this kind of investment separately but 
in the in the advanced accounting we are going to see how to consolidate this kind of financial statements and we have we record our investment at cost we record our investment at fair value and the equity value now when we are going to use cost when we are going to use fair value where when we are going to use the equity it depends on the ownership percentage so depends on this ownership percentage we can use the cost method fair value method or the equity method now if your investment is 0% to 20% you buy 0% to 20% of another company stock it means that there is no significant influence you don't have any influence over that company because you you purchased 0% to 20% of interest so there is no significant influence from your side okay you cannot tell them anything you cannot do anything with them so if this is the case first when you record investment first when you record investment we use the cost method and at the end of the year we do some adjustments we do some adjustment with the fair value so you learned from your intermediate accounting when you record investment you use cost method but at the end of the year we use fair value to do the adjustment so we are not going to learn this in our in our advanced accounting you learn this from your principles of accounting or intermediate accounting now look at the second part if you buy 20% to 50% okay then you have significant influence but you cannot control them okay although you have some influence but you cannot control them and if this is the case we record our investment we record our investment based on equity method based on the equity method also this part may not be applicable for advanced accounting okay because in the advanced accounting we are looking for control okay when parents company buy subsidiary company if it is more than 50% to 100% then you can have an effective control you can control them and when you can control them then we can as you are going to control you become parents company and you prepare consolidated financial statement now when you have the effective control of a company how can we record our investment we record our investment by using either cost method you can see that either cost method or the equity method or the equity method do you understand so this part this part is our advanced accounting part even if you buy less than 100% right it is 50% to less than 100% you have to consolidate 100% if you remember chapter 1 and 2 i told you that for example you purchase 80% even you purchase 80% but you can control them okay as 100% you can consolidate them 100% but you have to record non controlling interest also so in the advanced accounting we are going to learn this part and uh, when we go for equity method we have two types of equity method one is called partial equity method so two types of equity we have one partial equity method and the two is called complete complete equity method so today we are going to learn mainly the cost method then we are going to learn partial equity method and the complete equity method so again important class because if you don't know the difference you cannot prepare a consolidated financial statements properly now let's see the cost method first read the cost method and read the question so parsi company purchased 
80% of the outstanding voting share of Song Company at the beginning of 2009-19 for $378,000. So this is the money you paid. This is the cash you paid, and here you are the parent company. Parsi is the parent company. Parsi is the parent company. And Song is the subsidiary company. And who prepare who prepared the consolidated financial statement? Whose company? Parent or subsidiary? Yes, parents company prepared the consolidated financial statements yes so as a parent company you purchase 80 percent you purchase 80 percent and you paid three eighty seven thousand dollar and uh, subsidiary companies stockholders equity amount is given you know that total stockholders equity so who are the elements of stockholders equity? We have several elements like main elements are common stock. Plus retain earnings. Plus additional paid in capital. Additional paid in capital. So these are the uh, main uh, elements of total stockholders equity. We have several other elements, but we are going to cover this only common stock, retained earnings, and additional paid in capital. And this is the book value actually, right? So book value, book value is four eighty seventy five thousand dollar, and you buy eighty percent of the book value, right? Because eighty percent, right? You buy eighty percent of the book value. This is the total. Look at here. This is the total equity. Total equity is four seventy five thousand dollar, right? But you, parent company, only purchased 80% and you paid $387,000. So these are the important information for equity method, not for the cost method. Anyway, so at this moment, try to understand, we bought 80% of the equity from subsidiary company. And income and dividend distribution of subsidiary company from 2019 through 2021 are given below. So these information are from subsidiary, song company. And we know that they are the subsidiary company. So you are given, you are given some information regarding net income or net loss and dividend from subsidiary company. Now, how can we record subsidiary companies net income and net loss in the parent company? How can we record dividend of subsidiary company to the parent's company using different methods? So now at this moment, we are cost method. We are cost method. So prepare journal entries for parent company from the date of purchase from 2019 through 2021 to the amount of its investment. So first topic, how this account investment in subsidiary company, right? How this is the account, how this account is going to influence, how this account is going to influence, okay, based on cost method and equity method. Now here you can see that I already wrote a note that if we are the cost method, so we are now solving this question based on the cost method. So according to cost method, you can see, according to the cost method, we are going to ignore, we are going to ignore subsidiaries net income and net loss information that means this row that means net income and net loss is not our business okay is not our business for if we follow the cost method because we are the parent company try to understand we are the parent company we are not going to see what is the net income of subsidiary 
what is the net loss of the subsidiary. We are only going to consider dividend. We are only going to consider the dividend account. So this is the first point you have to remember under cost method. If we follow cost method, we are the parent company, we just ignore subsidiary companies net income and subsidiary companies net loss. Okay. Now you can see that 2019, what happened? 2019, their net income is $63,500 and this is the dividend they declared. 2020, also they have net income, they declared dividend. 2021, uh, they have net loss, but they have the dividend. Now, this is the important year according to the question, because although we can see that they have a net loss, subsidiary company have net loss, uh, $55,000, but how is it possible they declared and paid the dividend? So as an accounting student, uh, you should know, uh, you should know how to uh, pay dividend, from which account, from which account company is going to pay dividend? Do you know that? It should not be from net income or net loss, right? Why? Because if it is net loss, they, how can they provide dividend, right? So how, how, what is the account? Retained earnings, retained earnings, yes. So you know that, so as a business is, accounting student, you should know this, that retained earnings, so, Return earnings have some relationship with net income, net loss, and the dividend. You know that. If you have net income, okay, net income transferred to return earnings. You know that, right? Net income, so net income transferred to return earnings as a plus sign, okay? If you have net loss, net loss also transferred to return earnings as a minus. So net income transfer to return earnings as a plus sign, then net loss transfer to return earnings as a minus sign. After that, if you have any balance, okay? After that, if you have any balance of the return earnings, okay? Then company is going to pay dividend from this account. Do you understand? Then if we have anything remaining, okay? After this kind of adjustment, after adjusting net income and net loss, I repeat again, after adjusting net income and net loss with return earnings, if you have any remaining balance, then company is going to give you dividend. If you don't have enough return earnings to pay dividend, then there is, in, there is another option to pay dividend. Do you know that? For example, for example here, Here the amount is uh, equal, for example, equal is 30,000. So return earnings balance, return earnings balance 30,000, right? Do you understand? Now they can easily pay dividend $25,000 because they have a balance, right? They have a positive account of return earnings and it is more than $25,000. So they declared $25,000, okay? It is already declared. Company already declared, so company must pay this dividend. And we know that this dividend is usually paid from the retained earnings, from the retained earnings. So here we find that retained earnings balance $30,000. Company can easily pay $25,000 dividend. If it is $10,000, then how to pay, how to pay this dividend? <clears throat> If it is $10,000, but dividend declared, already declared $25,000. Or if this is negative amount, for example, net loss is very high. If it is negative return earnings, okay, debit balance. 
This is the debit balance of return earnings. Do you know what is the meaning of debit balance? That means return earnings is negative. Debit balance. How to pay this dividend? Company already declared the dividend. Hmm? The dividend may be cash, dividend may be a stock. It doesn't matter. But this is a value, right? The value is $25,000. No. No, no, already declared. Declared means you, you are liable to pay. So the, the answer is, if retained earnings do not have enough money, then company will pay a dividend from your capital account, from your investment, from your investment. Because you invest, look at here, you invest this money. This is your investment, right? This is your investment. So if there is no return earnings or if the return earnings has a debit balance, but company already declared dividend, this money is going to distribute from your capital, from your investment. Your investment is going to decrease. So this is completely loss investment. Okay. So let's see what happened from here because we have different years data. So look at 2019. So 2019 return earnings, 2019 return earnings. So this is the net income. And if company paid a dividend, right? remaining money is called so this is the look at here this is the net income right and company pays some dividend right and the remaining actually is the return earnings remaining is the return earnings because we don't have any beginning balance or ending balance of return earnings this is the first year this is the first year so the return earnings here is uh, 38500 so this is the ending balance of 2019 we know net income, right? We know dividend. So the remaining is the return earnings, right? So this is the ending balance of 2019 return earnings. So this ending balance is the beginning balance of return earnings for the next year, right? Okay. So this is now return earnings. Return earnings beginning balance of 2020. Now we know that we have to add we have to add net income. And what is the net income for 2020? It is 52,200. This is the net income. This is the net income for 2020, right? Yes. Now, if we add this to 38,500 and 52,200, it is higher than 50,000, right? It is higher than the dividend. So we can easily pay dividend. Okay, we can easily pay dividend, so minus dividend. Sorry, minus dividend is $50,000. And this is dividend, this is dividend. After that, after that we have now we have return earnings balance is 40,700, right? So this is now ending balance, ending balance of return earnings. Now this ending balance of return earnings is the beginning balance. If the beginning balance is another year, right? Another year. Now this is return earnings again, this is return earnings. Now we have net loss, right? So you, you know, you can see here, net loss is the minus. Net loss is the minus. So now minus net loss. And net loss is $55,000. Now net loss is the $55,000. So do we have any credit retain earnings? Because retain earnings is lower, right? Retain earnings is lower and, uh, and uh, our, how can I say, our net loss is higher, right? So we have written earnings, we have written earnings, and it is debit balance. It is debit balance. Written earnings, debit balance. 
So in this situation, in this situation, we cannot pay dividend from written earnings, right? If this is the case, if this is the case, then, then the dividend is $35,000. This money is going to pay it from your investment. Your investment is going to decrease. Okay, your investment is going to decrease. Do you understand? Yes, so now we are going to apply this. We are going to apply this to the cost method. According to the cost method, according to cost method, subsidiary, when subsidiary give you dividend, it is your, it is your dividend income. You should remember that. When subsidiary company give you dividend, okay? When, because we are cost method. We are cost method. So according to the cost method, according to the cost method, when you receive dividend, you are the parent company, you have to record it as your income or dividend revenue. Some textbook uh, use dividend income, some textbook use dividend revenue, but similar. So this is the cost method. According to the cost method, so two, two key points here, according to the cost method. Ignore net income or net loss, okay? Ignore net income or net loss of subsidiary company. So you are the parent company, you are the parent company, you have to ignore what is the net income or net loss of subsidiary company, right? Record. as dividend income or dividend revenue. Dividend revenue. Okay, so this is the main summary of cost method. Record dividend income and you know that Income increase, it is credit, you know that, right? Revenue is always credit, you know that, as an accounting student. So let's solve this question. So first, first we are going to solve this one. We invest our cash, okay? We invest our cash to buy a subsidiary company. So you know that the journalist investment in S company David and we pay cash, cash credit to record investment in song. Song is a subsidiary. So this is the first journal because this is 2019. What happened 2019? In the year 2019, question says that in the beginning of 2019, we purchased 80% of subsidiary company when we pay $387,000, right? So this is the journal. This is the journal. Then according to the cost method, it is not our business. What is the amount of net income or net loss of subsidiary? Right, we cannot record it in our own book. Now, when company declared the dividend, okay, so subsidiary company declared total twenty-five thousand dollar dividend, but you cannot claim hundred percent. Why you cannot claim that twenty percent, twenty-five thousand dollar is your dividend because you already purchased their eighty percent share, right? So their total dividend is twenty-five thousand dollar. Eighty percent is your dividend, right? Eighty percent is your dividend. So the second journal is you receive cash, cash debit, and you record dividend income credit. And when you calculate the money, the total is $25,000. And uh, this $25,000 dividend is not for you. Your percentage, your share is only 80%. Your share is only 80%. So $20,000. $20,000 is your income, dividend income.
to record dividend revenue or to record the dividend income. So this is 2019. Very simple. You invest, right? You you invest so your investment. You know that investment is the asset account. Your asset account increased and you pay cash. Your cash decreased. Now, now at the end of the year, at the end of the year, company has net income, right? It is not your business because it is cost method. So company has declared $25,000 dividend and 80% is your dividend. And you should record it. You should record it as your income or as your revenue. So we receive cash and dividend income credit. 2022, sorry, 2020. This is the question, 2020. Again, this is not our business, right? These are not our business. Company declared $50,000 dividend and 80% is ours, 80% is ours. So I just copy, this is 2020. So company declared $50,000 dividend and 80% is ours, so $40,000 is ours. $40,000 is ours. Do you understand? Now 2020 first came and we find that we find that $35,000 is our dividend, right? $35,000 is dividend. So most of the student will do this journal. most of the student will do this because they know that according to cost method, according to cost method, when you receive dividend, you record cash debit, dividend income credit, right? This is the normal rules, but, but the problem is, problem is we, you have to do some workings. Why you have to do some workings? Because you saw that 2021, there is a net loss, right? there is a net loss. Now, if you do this kind of workings, it will tell you from where the company paid the dividend. So you say, find that dividend, we know the dividend should come from net income through return earnings, right? Net income transfer to return earnings, then if we have a positive, then we get the dividend from return earnings. But here, here return earnings is negative balance, okay? And it is the debit balance. So, Although I received the dividend, but it is not from the net income, it is not from the return earnings, right? It is from my own account, okay? It is my, from my own account. So when I, I invest, look at here, I record investment in subsidy debit, right? And you know that dividend means you withdraw cash from the business, right? This is the definition of dividend. Dividend means you, receive, you already receive cash from business and you receive cash from this business company paid this money from your investment account. So this is the wrong journal. This is the wrong journal, okay? So the journal is, you, your investment is going to decrease. Your investment is going to decrease. So you receive cash, it is true. You receive cash, but you sacrifice your investment. Because at that year, at that year company had a loss. Look at here. At that year company had a loss, and the return, but return earnings balance was debit. So company subsidiary cannot pay you money from their, your return earnings, okay? Subsidiary company is going to give you money back from your investment. So as a parent company, you have to accept this. When you buy another company, okay? You have to accept this kind of gain or loss. So I believe you understand cost method, right? Ignore net income or net loss record dividend as a revenue, but you have to do some workings to find out that whether dividend is paid from return earnings or dividend is paid from your investment. If dividend is paid from in your investment, then you have to record investment credit. And how to understand? This is the workings. These are the workings that will tell you from where dividend is paid. Now look at the partial method partial equity method. 
So this is the partial equity method. And I already wrote my own formula to make it easy for you. So look at the complete method first. This is the formula for complete method. Complete method means partial equity method plus something additional. Okay, so one entry we should do additional. One entry we should do additional, but we have to follow 100% of partial equity method, right? Then we are going to add something new. It means that if in, in your exam question ask you to use the complete equity method, it means that you should do partial first, right? After doing partial, you are going to add something additional. So we should know what is the meaning of partial equity method. Now, according to the equity method mainly, according to the equity method, if subsidiary company has a net income, it is your net income. Because equity means you become the 100% owner, something like this. So if subsidiary company has net income, it is your net income. If subsidiary company has net loss, it is your loss, right? Based on how, what, is the, what is your percentage? So here you can see that their net income, 2019, 2019 their net income is 63,500. 80% is your net income, right? They have a net loss. They have a net loss, $55,000. 80% is your loss because it is the equity method. Now look at here, subsidy net income equal. So when subsidiary company have a net income, how to handle this? It is your net income, right? That means your equity income, look at that. Equity, your equity income now credit. And we know that this is the debit credit rules. Income increase and it is credit. We, we know that from our accounting double entry rules, right? Income increase means it is credit. Do you understand? So subsidiary company has a net income. It is also your income. Right. So what is the accounting we use? We use accounting title called equity income. So equity income, equity income sometimes credit. You can see that equity income sometimes credit, equity income, equity income sometimes debit. Do you understand? So when equity income debit, okay, when equity income debit, if your income decrease. Your income decrease, so it is David. So loss means your income is going to decrease, right? Loss means your income is going to decrease. So this year, 2021st, 2021st, equity income is going to record as a debit, but 2019 and 2020, equity income is going to record as credit. Clear? So we, we done this part. We done this part. So this part I can write here. This part you are going to adjust equity, equity income. Or you can think about equity loss, right? equity income and equity loss, something like this. Now, so we know that equity income means, equity income means it is credit. So if you write credit, you should write a debit account also, right? Debit account also. Now, only dividend is the account that company give you cash. If there is any dividend, company either give you cash or either give you stock anyway, right? But in case of equity income or equity loss, you are going to adjust with your investment account. That means equity income is a good news. Equity income is a good news, right? Equity income is a good news. So this good news will increase your investment account your investment account, that means investment in subsidiary account, this account is going to increase. This account, in, account is going to increase if you have a good news. Do you understand? Because it is asset. It is asset account, asset account. So when there is a net income, 
subsidiary company will transfer this net income to your investment account. Do you understand? I repeat again, when you have a net income, this net income transferred to your investment account. So asset increase. So asset increase, debit. When you have a loss, when parent, parent company has a loss, it is your loss, right? Now company, that means subsidiary company is going to decrease. Decrease your investment account. Your asset is going to decrease. Your asset is going to decrease. So here, asset increase because of equity income and here asset decrease because of equity loss. Asset decrease. Asset decrease. So we find that now we find that this column, this row is about net income or net loss. So here, both cases, both cases. So this one is credit. This one is credit. And we should have a debit and debit is called investment. Investment is debit. Okay, income is a good news. This good news increase your investment. So if you have a if you have a loss, okay, if subsidiary company's loss, it is also your loss, right? It is also your loss. So how to handle this? Now net loss is debit, right? Loss is debit, you know that. Loss is one kind of expense. It is debit and it will decrease your investment. It will decrease your investment. So this is for net income or net loss. Do you understand? So one account debit, another account credit. So we have only two accounts, equity income and investment. Now, dividend, because we have the equity method. You already know this formula. So dividend is paid through this way. Net income, look at here, net income transfer to where? Net income transfer to return earnings, then we receive dividend, right? So you already record income, look at here. And according to cost method, can you remember? According to the cost method, we record dividend as income, right? Now equity method said that, equity method said that dividend is not income. Why dividend is not income? according to the equity method. Why dividend is not income according to equity method? The reason is you can see that. You already record income one time. Look, you already record income, right? You already record income. Equity income, you already record. Again, if you record dividend income, it means that you are going to record income two times. Because this dividend, this dividend came from this income. Right? This dividend came from this income. So you already record income. And if you record dividend as your income again, then it is your mistake. You cannot record income twice. You have to record income only one time. So you already record income here. You already record income here as your own income, right? Look, you record income as your own income and your investment account is increasing. But when company paid a dividend, when company paid dividend, this dividend is actually paid from your investment account. Why? Look at here. This income transfer where? This income transfer to investment, right? This income transfer to investment. And when company pay the dividend, it pay dividend from your investment account. Clear? So you know the relationship. You know the relationship. So here we have, so when we have dividend, when we have dividend, we have two accounts. One is cash and another is investment in S company, investment in S. So you record cash, cash is always debit because you receive dividend, right? Cash is always debit. And because of, because you already received dividend, it is paid from your investment, it is credit. 
this credit. So this is the partial equity method. This is the partial equity method. If we go to the question, again, this is the question, for example, this is the question, net income is your income, net income is your income, net loss is your loss, right? And dividend, you receive it from your income, right, from your investment. So look at the journal. 2019, same question, look at here, same question, we use equity method. Same question, we use partial equity method. And what happened in the year one, year one journal, this one is the similar, this one similar. You, you invest your money to another company. This is 2019, this is 2019, first journal is similar for every method. First journal is similar for every method, right? You invest in subsidiary company and you pay them cash $387,000. Now, we find that there is an income here. There is income. This amount is the income. This amount is the income. So, we have to record. equity income credit because subsidiary income is your income, right? But you cannot say that 100% is your money. And that you cannot say 100% is your money. So total net income is, total net income is 63,500. And only 80% is your net income. Only 80% is your net income. So 50,800, 50,000. 800 is your income, right? Now it is your income, but company will not give you this money to your hand. Company will give you only cash if it, if it is dividend. It is very simple, try to understand. If company give you any cash, it is dividend. Otherwise, all accounts are going to adjust with your investment account. Okay? So you have a net income. Company said that you have a good news. We have net income. We are going to transfer this money to your investment account. We are going to transfer this money to your investment account. Do you understand? So this money is your net income, but company is not going to give it to you, to your hand. Company said that we already transferred this money to your investment account. So this is to record equity equity income equity income. So this is 2019, right? 2019 we done. Two things happen. This is net income and this is, oh sorry, we have a dividend. We have a dividend. So if we have a dividend, we receive cash, right? We receive cash, do you understand? And this cash is actually paid from our investment account because net income already transfer here, right? Net income already transferred here. Now from here, company pay you the dividend. So the journal is here, 2019. We receive cash, tells David, and this cash came from my investment account. Investment in S company. So, so look at here. If you apply, if you apply, try to understand. If you apply cost method here, if you record here dividend income. Okay, if you record cash debit dividend income credit as on equity the cost method, right? Then this is your mistake. Look, you record income how many times? You record income two times. Because this dividend actually is included here, right? This dividend is included here. This dividend transferred to your investment account. And from investment account, company is going to give you the dividend. So if you record dividend income again, it means that you record record income, income two times. From one company, you record income two times. It is not accurate. So it should be this dividend is company going to pay you, okay? This dividend 
company going to pay you from your investment account. And what is the amount of dividend? Your dividend is $25,000 total. And uh, your portion is 80%. You acquire 80%, so 80% is your dividend. And it is $20,000. To record dividend. Now this is 2019, 2020, we find that also we have a net income and also we have a dividend, right? So this is 2020. This is 2020, company have equity income. So how much? 2020, so equity income is uh, 52,500, yes. This is 2020, 52,000, 52,500 is the income, 80% is yours. Right, 80% is yours. So it is $42,000. So you record subsidiary income is as your income, right? You record subsidiary income as your income and you, uh, you, you consider only 80%. So we record equity income and we transfer this money we transfer this money to the investment account. So when company pay the dividend, $50,000 company pay dividend, $50,000 company pay dividend, 80% is your, and it is $40,000. $40,000 is your dividend. Now 2021, can you remember, we have a net loss, right? Net loss. So net, in, net loss transfer to investments, like here, net income. Net income, income increase, it is credit, right? Income increase, it is credit and it transfer to investment, investment debit. Now we have to do opposite. Net loss. If it is net loss, then you can write equity income now debit. Equity income debit and it is how much? $55,000. $55,000 loss, right? Can you remember? $55,000 loss, now it is your, now income, equity income become debit. Before we record equity income credit, now you record equity income debit. Clear? Equity income debit, or you can write, some textbook write here, equity loss. No problem, if you write equity income debit, no, it means that it is loss. Right, income debit means loss, income credit means revenue, something like this. So either is fine, you can write equity loss or you can write equity income. No problem. It depends on several textbook use, something like this. So when we have a loss, it is $44,000. When we have a loss, this loss decrease our investment because we have a bad investment, right? We invest our money, but there is a loss. So our investment is going to decrease. $44,000, $44,000 is our loss. To record. Equity loss. Record equity loss. Now, when we record dividend, 
when we record dividend, the journal is similar. The company declared dividend $35,000. And 80% is our dividend, $28,000. So according to the equity method, dividend is always paid from our investment. Okay, dividend is always paid from our investment. So cash debit, investment credit. And only difference is we have equity income or we have equity loss. If we have equity income, it is credit, our investment will increase. If we have a equity loss, it is debit and our investment will decrease. Very simple. So now partial math done, partial method done. Let me explain the complete method. So complete method is quite easy because you know that we are going to follow partial equity method plus additional, right? So you can see that this is a solution. This is a solution up to here. This is 2019. This is 2019, up to here, this is called, this is called partial. Partial equity, right? Plus, plus here, plus here we have to do some additional. You have to do some additional. You understand? So after doing partial equity method, every year, every year we are do, we are going to follow the same. So I am going to tell you what is the additional very soon. So I make it separate so that later on you can easily understand what is happening. This is additional and this is the partial. So the highlighted part are the partial part. Now what is additional is belongs to here. I wrote a note here. So a journal entry, that means in addition, we have to do a new journal entry. A journal entry is required to adjust for depreciable or depreciation related assets to the excess of market over the book value of the depreciable asset. So don't worry, it is very simple. So what should do what should do for the additional part? When the complete method came, we need to do this additional and uh, we have to compare. That means we have to compare the cost price. That means the money you paid, right? Versus book value. So we are going to compare cost. Here cost means the market price. You go to the market, right? You go to the market and you paid some money, right? You paid some money and you buy one company. So according to this question, according to this question here, you can see that our cost price is $387,000. This is our cost price, cost equal, cost equal $387,000. Now we are going to compare, we are going to compare book value. Now you can see that this is the total book value. 
this is the total book value right this is the total book value but you buy So the total book value is four seventy five thousand dollars. But you buy how many percentage? You buy eighty percent, right? Do you understand? Can you remember the question? <clears throat> this is the question. This is the question. You paid, you paid three seven three hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars. This is your cost price, right? This is your cost price. This is your cost price. You paid three eighty seven thousand dollars. And what is the total? You can see that at the time of purchase, subsidiary company's total equity, total book value. Here, total book value. Total book value is four seventy five thousand dollar, but you did not buy hundred percent of their book value. You buy only you buy only eighty percent of the book value, right? So you are going to compare how much money you paid for eighty percent. For eighty percent, you paid three eighty seven thousand dollar, and and for you paid this three eighty seven thousand dollar for eighty percent of this book value. Do you understand? For eighty percent of this book value, it is hundred percent, right? It is hundred percent, but you paid for eighty percent. Now we can calculate this. So we are going to compare. Look at here. We are going to compare cost. This is our cost, and the book value is eighty percent. Book value is actually eighty percent. Book value is. Three eighty thousand dollar. So we are going to compare these two amount. We are going to compare these two amount. I write here. This is the cost of our investment. This is the cost of our investment, and this is the cost of the book value, right? Of eighty percent. And the difference is the difference. Difference. Is seven thousand dollar. Now tell me, this seven thousand dollar is a good news or bad news for the parent company? For the parent company, this seven thousand dollar is good news or bad news? Bad news. Very good. Bad news. And this bad news means, I told you that whether you have a good news, whether you have a bad news, according to the equity method, it is going to adjust with your investment account. Right, bad news will decrease your investment, right, and good news will increase your investment. Now, how to handle this kind of bad news? The question usually the real business practice is: if you have a bad news, right, it is going to adjust with your depreciation depreciable asset. So you can see here, you can see here market price is higher, right? Why market price is higher? Because the question said that. Maybe their equipment value is higher, so you will have some instruction in the question paper. Question said that. Question said that the difference between book value, the difference between book value, and the market price. Implied value means the cost price, right? The difference between book value and implied value means your cost price or market price was attributed solely to an excess of market over. Anyway, market is higher. Market is higher. We are going to allocate this to a depreciable asset. To a depreciable asset. So you should know who are the depreciable asset. Land is depreciable asset. No, that means it may be either equipment or building or some other furniture, something like this. Okay, so this seven thousand dollar loss is going to allocate to a depreciable asset for how many years? For ten years. So, if depreciable asset, can you remember? We have a journal entry like this. If depreciable asset, if depreciable asset, so we record depreciation expense debit. 
for example, it is equipment. Equipment debit, and we record accumulated depreciation credit. You remember this, right? And it is seven thousand dollars. This is seven thousand dollars. So the question said that if you have any difference, okay, if your market price is higher, if your market price is higher, you are going to allocate this, you are going to allocate this to a depreciable asset. And if you allocate this to a depreciable asset, this is journal entry, depreciation expense debit and accumulated depreciation credit. But the question is, the problem is here. <clears throat> this is for 10 years. So this is a sad news, but you have an option according, according to the company law that if you have a good news or bad news, okay, you can allocate this, okay, you can allocate this for several years. Do you understand? You can allocate this loss for the several years. That means every year, 10 times, okay. So if it is for 10 years, it means that per year, per year is $700. So you no need to show this loss, okay? You no need to show this loss for only one time. You can allocate this for how many times? For 10 years or 20 years or 50 years, it depends on the question. So you can allocate this loss, okay? You can allocate this loss for several years. Clear? So this is uh, the company law regulation that, although this is a bad news, right? Although this is a bad news, you pay $7,000 more than the book below. Although this is a bad news, but don't record this bad news for only one time. You can, you can allocate this for several times. So look at here, if you record 7,000 one year, you have a very big loss maybe. But if you allocate this for 700, that means your loss will decrease, something like this. Net income will increase. So this $700, this $700 we are going to record because we are the parents company, right? If we have a loss, it is going to adjust with which account? I told you that any good news or any bad news, according to equity method, we are going to adjust with our investment. Clear? Do you understand? This is a bad news, right? This is a bad news. This bad news, we are going to adjust with our investment account. So this is, this is the, This is 2019. <clears throat> this is 2019, according to partial equity method. Now, what should we do? Additional, additional is now. It is something like our investment is going to decrease. This account is going to decrease credit. Yes. Credit. Investment is credit 700. Do you understand? Investment is credit, right? Because this 700 is a loss, right? And if you remember, I told you that if you have gain, you will record equity income credit. If you have a loss, you have to record equity income debit, right? So equity income now debit. Equity income now debit and our investment is credit. This is the additional, that means the narration is ad to adjust. Adjustment of the difference. Between cost and book value.
So do you understand the journal? Here market price is higher. That means we pay more than the cost price, right? We pay more than the cost price. So our investment decrease, our income investment decrease because this kind of journal entry, I told you that, I show you a journal entry here. Depreciation expense debit. Depreciation expense debit means it is your equity loss, right? Or equity income debit, something like this. So this additional one, because we are going to allocate this for how many years? We are going to allocate. So if you write here 7,000, you can also do that. Look at here. You can also do that, that in the in first year, you allocate all loss. But if you do that, then in this year, you will have a significant net loss or your net income will decrease significantly. So according law said that, uh, company law said that you no need to allocate the loss for only one year. You have a good news, you can allocate it for several years. So if you allocate for several years, then the same journal for how many years? According to this question, it is 10 times, right? So you can do it 10 years. So this is the another year, you can see. This is another year, we do the same. This is another year. This is another year, we do same. We can do this up to 10 years. So this is the additional. Now, if the situation is different, for example, cost, cost is, if this is the case, cost is $380,000, but book value is $387,000, difference is $7,000, right? If this is the case, it is your gain, right? It is your gain. Now you can allocate this gain for five years or 10 years. Then the journal is opposite. Gain means equity income credit and your investment will increase. Do you understand? If you have a gain, that's opposite journal. If you have a gain, then equity income credit and investment become debit. Your investment will increase and your income will increase. Again, you can allocate it only one year or you can allocate it 10 years or 15 years. It's, it depends. So usually we allocate it for several years because then you will have a smooth income, right? Do you understand? If you record only one time, then investor cannot predict what will happen in future. So this year, maybe you have a very high income or this year, maybe you have very low, low income. So it's better to allocate for several years. Do you understand? So this is all about cost and equity method. I suggest you to uh, uh, revise this chapter again and again before you go to the next part because this is very, very important concept in accounting, cost method and equity method, very, very important. So do you have any question?